Okay, so let's look at the symplectic Euler method and the Euler A method. So the symplectic Euler method is sometimes referred to as the Euler B. And, uh, and we're going to look at also at the Euler A method. All right, um, so in particular, let's start with symplectic Euler, or Euler B. Okay, so, um, so the symplectic Euler method is, is kind of interesting because it involves evaluating the vector field at the initial position and the final momentum. Okay, so, so you have Qn plus one is equal to Qn plus h times, uh, See, um, let's say f, okay, of q n uh, p n plus one, and then uh, p n plus one is equal to p n plus h times g at q n uh, p n plus one. Okay, so in general, this is an implicit method. basically means that you typically have to solve this uh, as a system of nonlinear equations, possibly with Newton's method or maybe some sort of fixed point iteration scheme. Okay. Um, but if you have the property that uh, f is just a function of um, p, right, and uh, G is just a function of uh, Q, then it's explicit. Okay, and, and let's sort of see why, right? So if F is just a function of P, you get QN plus one is equal to QN plus H times F evaluated at PN plus one, right? And you get Pn plus 1 is equal to Pn plus H uh, G. Okay, so G is just a function of Q. Qn Pn, uh, well, it's just a function of Q, right? So, uh, so it's easy to convince yourself that if you know Qn Pn, right, then the second equation allows you to compute Pn plus 1. And then the first equation allows you to compute Qn plus 1 from Qn and Pn plus 1, which you had obtained from the second equation. So, um, so again, it's like if you have, it's like this kind of, um, you know, property, if you will, it's like the, the vector field, it's like, uh, it doesn't depend on, on um, the full, um, <coughs> you know, all the variables, it's like uh, in this kind of partitioned way, uh, then um, the symplectic Euler method will be explicit uh, in that situation. So you might ask, it's like under what circumstances it's like this arises, and uh, if you saw before, it's like we had introduced this idea of a separable Hamiltonian, and indeed, if you have a separable Hamiltonian, then it has uh, this kind of structure. So as an example, right, if we have a separable Hamiltonian. Right, which is to say that the Hamiltonian, which depends on Q and P, is equal to Tp plus Vq, for example, where this is sort of the kinetic energy, and this is the potential energy. Right, then uh, you can check that uh, F is just a function of P. It's just the gradient with respect to P of the kinetic energy term. And then G is just a function of Q. It's negative the gradient of the potential, which depends on Q. Okay, which uh, is exactly these conditions. It's like, which, um, you know, reduce this more general form of like all equations to these equations, which then can be solved in explicit fashion by uh, solving the second equation first, or using the second equation and then using the first equation. Okay, so, um, yeah, and in those situations, the symplectic Euler method is explicit. OK, 
Okay. All right. So uh, so let's look at uh, what happens um, with um, Euler A, which is uh, sort of a close analog of simplectic to Euler. So here it's, uh, you know, you have something which is implicit in P and then explicit in Q in some sense. So you have Qn plus 1 is equal to Qn plus h times uh, f evaluated in Qn plus 1 Pn, right? So initial momentum final position now, which is in contrast with uh, Euler B or symplectic Euler, which had initial position final momentum, right? Okay, so Pn plus 1 is equal to Pn plus H times G, uh, Qn plus 1 Pn. Okay, all right, and so in general, again, this is uh, implicit. So in general, this is implicit. Right, uh, but becomes explicit. have the property that uh, the vector field f right is just a function of p and then uh, g is just a function of q okay all right which is the same thing we had before um, okay so then there are a few terms okay the first of which is that Euler a and b <laughs> uh, symplectic integrators, which is to say that the pullback of the symplectic structure by the flow map is again the same symplectic structure. Okay, and uh, that's the theorem. Let's make a few remarks about this. We had talked about this idea of adjoints before, and it turns out that Euler A and Euler B are adjoints of each other, right? Adjoints. And if you've forgotten what an adjoint is, it's basically the method, the adjoint of the method is the inverse of the negative time flow of that method, okay? Uh, and the exact flows uh, have the property that they're self-adjoint, which means the adjoint of the exact flow is the exact flow itself, okay? Um, all right, so these things are adjoints each, each other the same way that sort of forward and backward Euler. Oh, yeah, joints of each other. Okay. And then uh, and then the other remark is that the edge joint of a symplectic method is again symplectic. So let's look at a, a few examples. So, uh, so this is about uh, getting a sense as to how Euler A and Euler B are related, right? So, uh, 
that if we split a separable Hamiltonian, in the reverse order, right, which is that you have HQP equals to VQ plus TP, so I swap the order of these things, so this is now what I think of as H1, and this is what I think of as H2, then uh, you can check that the composition, right, or the splitting method associated with this, which is this particular composition, or if I want to write it in terms of V and T, looks like uh, first applying the flow map generated by the kinetic energy part before applying the flow map generated by the potential. This is the Euler, uh, this is the Euler method, uh, Euler A method. Okay, um, and let me just write it down explicitly, uh, although you've probably seen it before. Right, so Qn plus 1 is equal to Qn plus h uh, gradient with respect to P of the kinetic energy piece. And then uh, Pn plus 1 is Pn minus h the gradient with respect to Q of the potential evaluated at the final time. Okay, or the position at the final time. So then you can check that the Euler A and Euler B methods are adjoints in the following way, right? From this calculation, okay, which is that the exact flow, the composition of the um, exact flow associated with the potential with the kinetic energy piece, right? And I want to take the adjoint of this. This is the adjoint of Euler A. Okay. So uh, just by uh, general properties of the adjoints, uh, when you take the adjoint of composition, you take the composition of the adjoints, but with the reverse order. Okay. So you have uh, now the adjoint of um, the uh, exact flow associated with the kinetic energy piece composed with the adjoint of the uh, potential piece. Uh, all right. But what happens is that these are individually exact flows, so they're self adjoint. Okay. So this is equal to um, this composition. And this thing, right? is Euler B. Okay, so what uh, you can conclude then is that the adjoint of Euler A is Euler B, it's like, which is sort of what we had sort of said before. Okay, so where we use the fact that exact flows are self-adjoint. So, so let's just stop here for a minute.